this man has got great pace. Here he goes. Dished off here beautifully. What a goal. That's an absolute peach. Alan Brogan sent in. McManaman dodging. McManaman scoring. There's a point between the teams. With the angle about 45 metres. Here he comes to win the All-Ireland. Cluxton. He's put it over the line. Allianz Football League 2012. Was it a good league? I'd say the big thing that came out of the league to me was that Dublin, who were all Ireland champions, didn't beat any of the teams that any of the teams were in the, the semi finals of the league. I think that the league, you have managers coming out saying that they're not too bothered about the league, players saying the same thing. Like mm. it's the second most important competition at inter county level, and you have people treating it with contempt. So, how serious are they taking like, the second most important competition? Kerry are the best team, still the best team in Gaelic football, let's face it. Dublin are all Ireland champions, but Kerry are the best team, and I think they re established that during the league. While Cork were a little bit ineffective early on, they did come strong, and after the Mayo game, they really, they really poured it on in the semi final. Uh, you know, they were really impressive against Down at, at spells, and I think the, the stronger teams, with the exception of Dublin, did get there, and uh, that reflects well on it. So let's talk about the Dubs and the championship. They're all Ireland champions. Here's, here he comes to win the All Ireland. Cluxton. Oh, he's put it over the ball. Are they going to do two in a row? I think yeah. It's a big year for Dublin. It's a big test for them, and this will really mentally test them. Because sometimes I feel they don't like it in their hands dirty, Martin. I think there's a lot of pressure on them to deliver two in a row. There will be a lot of pressure on them. That's where they may just ultimately fall down. Like, desire is the one big thing winning an All-Ireland. I think they have their All-Ireland now. They've waited so long. Do they want it as much this year as what they did last year? They didn't show it during the league, whether they come in the championship with a higher intensity. Now they have their All-Ireland, will, will they bring that to the table You know, again this year for the championship? That's the question. But who will stop them in Leinster? I think it could be mapped out for Kildare. I have to say, in a one-off Leinster final against Dublin, this team has been developing and developing. And sometimes we make the mistake of expecting too much from Kildare. But I think a Leinster title would be a real prize for this team on the journey that they've been with Kieran McGinney over the last five, four years. I think McGinney has taken them further than maybe you know the bunch of players. I, I don't rate them as highly as people rate the, the players themselves. I think McGinney's done a tremendous job with them, take them that far. Yeah, it's a big, big year for them. They need an inside forward that can get you like four or five points from play. Cavan is a good player, but he's a midfielder with his club and he's more natural half forward. They don't have a dangerous corner forward. The big lad Flaherty, full forward, and for someone to feed off him. Doyle's not a corner forward. Callahan's not a corner forward, they don't have that. In recent weeks we've seen your county, Colin, very much in the headlines with Banty. Is, what's the aftershock? Or is there an aftershock in County Mead? There is a feeling within the county, and I think it's a strong feeling, that administratively Mead is, has weakened at a, at a lot of levels. And I think it's reflected in the performances at underage level over the last number of years. Going back to 2001 was the last time that Mead played in the Leinster Under-21 final. Now, that's a long time for a county like Mead, 11 years. The thing about McEnany is that he, he inherited a team coming from an all Ireland semi-final. I thought when he took over that he would, like, Mead run like, so close and all they needed was a couple of tight defenders. They had good forwards, a solid midfield. He started tinkering with things and in the space of two years, you're talking about hoping they don't get drubbins in the championship. This is coming from a team he got that was in an Ireland semi-final the year before. But that's not good enough. Mead now are in disarray. I, th like, I think McEnany should have gone for the good of Mead football, if I'm being honest. OK, let's go up to your province, Ulster. Last year, Donegal came in for a lot of criticism with their blanket defence. Are we going to see more of this from Donegal? You're going to see a different type of Donegal team this year, you know. Michael Murphy's going to be a very big player in it, you know, you know, getting an injury cleared up and everything else. Are they good enough to win the Ulster title or not? I still think Tyrone are the team to watch in Ulster this year, but def definitely Marty a different team. Jim's on record this year for saying that he, is he isn't going to be as defensive as what, he's what he was last year. I saw them playing a league final against Leash and they weren't defensive at all. And they only really got defensive when they came down against Kildare. And, and Dublin. Mm. And that's only two games in a whole year. They won Division Two title. Give Jim McGuinness a break. He's obviously an outstanding manager. Like, I know him from when I was down in Tralee in college. He's an inspirational type of person, never mind manager. So, like, I think to judge him on this year, if it continues that, like, m me personally, I don't like that style of football. But at least he has the Donegal team believing in him and doing it right. 
Uh, I think Tyrone probably should be favourites for the Ulster title. I think there's something left in Donegal. Uh, certainly there's a lot left in Donegal and they will improve. And I think if Michael Murphy hits any kind of form, as uh, if he can shake off this injury later, if they can hang on, and I think Donegal could, could defend their title this year. Let me just move slightly south, westwards. Galway and Mayo, are they the two top contenders for Connacht? I'd love to see, of all the counties, bar me, Don if Donegal don't win in All-Ireland, I'd love to see Mayo win in All-Ireland. The Mayo people deserve an All-Ireland, you know, probably, I mean, but you have to, have to win it. I think they have a chance this year. They're in the top five in the country, or six in the country. They're there, thereabouts, this stage. I, I'd go, say, Mayo, Mayo probably in Connacht. So you're going to go for Mayo, you're going for Roscommon? No, I go for Mayo. I just said Roscommon would be in the shake-up, but oh. I don't think they'll win it. I think Mayo as well, they're, they look the form team. Yeah, I think Mayo too. Look, I, I think, uh, you know, they're a highly athletic team. I think Galway are a year or two off where they, where they are going to be. I think they will be a very strong team on the basis of that under-21 team and with some of the minor teams that they've had in recent years. But I do think Mayo have positioned themselves very well for this year. Munster. I presume you're all going to vote for Clare in this one because I'm here. But have Cork and Kerry any chance of winning the provincial championship? I suppose the thing about Cork and say about them is I love watching Kerry playing football and I love watching the Dubs playing football. Cork doesn't excite me the way they play their football. Cork, they're there. They're, to me, they're number three in the country at the minute. I'd love to see them play more exciting football and you know enjoyable to watch. Yeah, nice. I, can, I completely agree with Martin on that one. Like Cork don't excite me either. They, they don't really have any players as a neutral. I've nothing against Cork. They just don't have any players that. I would follow or you know, no one like a Paul Galvin or a Gooch or these fellas that kind of excite you and flair, you know, flair players, players with a bit of personality. Like you might never have to kick a ball playing on the Cork team unless you play in the half forward line up. I love watching Kerry play like Mead, you know, in the in the late nineties, teams like that that kick it in and, and have got you know top top players. As a neutral I can't take take to Cork really at all. I think it's almost as if it's Cork's turn. Kerry have won the last <laughs> two. So uh, I think Cork for the Munster title. Kerry through the qualifiers, bit of momentum, and they'll be right there at the end. Let's talk about the championship, the provincial championships. Are they outdated? Do they belong to the last century? Is it time for us to move on? I think it does need to change. Players deserve better than, than so two. So you'd be against the provincial system? I'm totally against it. I think maybe it's kept, maybe it should be kept as a warm-up competition for the people who don't want to lose it. But the All-Ireland series should be completely changed. The people in the provincial councils will love you, Colin <laughs> Parkinson. I like the idea of four eights if it's going to be like that for a bit of balance. I don't think it's ever going to happen. So the only other real option is to break it all down and really go for that eight groups of four because the counties are tailor made for it. Are you, as prominent GA people, are you guys happy with the marketing strategy of the GA, particularly with championship looming around? We're up against it. We're up against it this summer. We, we could end up with Leinster and Ulster in, in the European Cup uh, rugby final. And we've got the, the, the Olympics coming up where, where you know, hopefully Ireland do well in that there. And we've got the European Championship. So this is a big summer and this is a big test for the GEA. In the past, we probably have to say, you know, we didn't have this. We were always number one sport and we were there. It's changing. It's changing rapidly. And now we've got to act. OK, let's talk about the 2012 Championship as it stands. What are, what are going to be the burning issues? Will referees be again the centre of attention and criticism? It's probably the poorest I've seen, the, ref the standard referee at the minute in, in the country. Now maybe we've lost a look at the older referees that were, you know, used common sense and everything else. I think we have a lot of Senegal fouling going on. And I think we'll stamp it out. I think what has to happen coming to the GA is carry the yellow cards. So if you get one and two yellow cards, you miss the next game. I think incentives need to be given to ex-players to become referees. They've played at the top level, they know the tricks of the trade, they know how to deal with players. Like a lot of these play a lot of these refs have never played the game. And you're learning rules, but you don't know how to, you know, understand them or you don't know when a player is tricking you. So Colin Parkinson, would you like to be a referee? It depends how much you pay me, Martin. <laughs> being honest. You'd have to get an incentive because it's a thankless job. I'm not, like, I'm not going to lie, but if you want standard refereeing to improve, I think there's incentives going to have to be there for maybe ex-players that come out of the game. They usually go into management, maybe try and get them into refereeing. I think it would improve the game no end. We're heading into the championship. Give me one thing you don't want to see, one thing you want to see in the championship of 2012. I'm not going first on that one. <laughs> well, think about uh, that. You have to think I? about that one. Yeah. Give me something you don't want to see. Give don't me something you really want to see. Don't want Athlete to, to win a game. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see teams like Mayo and Kildare come through and either or reach an All-Ireland final and go on to win it because from a neutral perspective, I would just like to see Mayo or Kildare or even Donegal, someone like that, come mm. to an All-Ireland final and go on and win it. I would have to say I'd like to see Kerry win All-Ireland. I'd like to see them win it play in purest football, which they're the best team at, and that 
they train one night a week or two nights a week and we all go back to doing that again and yeah, that's exactly. and that's maybe the way forward from I think I think what I wouldn't like to see is these mass defences which kind of crept in last year Tyrone started it Donegal kind of got on board on it it's not what the supporters want to see so maybe the bank of defence is out leash go well that's my <laughs> bad and good okay gentlemen it's time to vote who's going to win the All-Ireland football title next September I'll say Kerry because the, to me they're the best footballers in the country uh, double that multiply that by two Kerry as well they are the best footballers and as a lover of Gaelic football, you want to see the best team win the All Ireland, and Kerry are the, like, are the best team. Column Geese. I'm tempted to make it a treble, but I think Cork might creep back up on Kerry and Dublin this year. I think when they get all their key players that they were missing last year, I think Cork may just win the All Ireland title with a little bit more style. Two for Kerry, one for Cork. The All Ireland is going to Munster, according to our panel. Martin McHugh, Column Parkinson, Column Keys, thank you all for joining us on League Sunday. Yeah, so Marty and his mates have had their say in it all. Let's hear what Joe Brolly and Pat Spillane have got to say about it. Um, none of them taking Dublin to retain their title. Let's start with Dublin then, Pat. Yeah, well, there's three teams in contention, the same as last year. Dublin, Kerry and Cork. Uh, Dublin won the, won the All-Ireland last year. Uh, people in Kerry will say they were handed in All-Ireland, but that's beside the point. Dublin were the All-Ireland champions. They won it because they, they, were, big day. they were very well organised. They were... Fant they were the fittest team to ever hit Crow Park on the final day and they had two marquee forwards, right? The problem for Dublin this year, A, if anything happened, either of the Brogans or the two Brogans. Take out the two Brogans and they're an ordinary team. The big problem, Michael, there, trying to put back-to-back -back All Islands is trying to replicate the intensity and commitment and tempo and work rate that you gave but, the but previous the year. team that you played... Uh, on did that all the time. Can Kenny Hurlers do that all the time? Why can't Dublin? No, but they were because exceptional because we were we, we were by a million miles the best footballing team in the country. The same as Kilkenny are by a million miles away. There is no great te footballing team around at the moment. Dublin won the All Ireland last year because they were very well organised and superbly fit. Now we saw them during the league and they didn't play, bring that intensity Andy, and that tempo Andy. to the game. And when they don't bring that intensity and commitment and work rate to the table, they're a very ordinary team. And I think one of the problems is you'll, you'll start back training at the start of the year and you'll know what's ahead of you, the sacrifices and the workload. And, and, and you'll get bad thoughts, cross your mind on bad nights, saying, what's in it for me? Another medal, a couple of good piece ups and, uh, and a holiday. And, and to some players, they mightn't give only 99%. You give 99% and you'll fall short. Dublin will be there at the business end, yeah, but, but Dublin will not win the Ireland. Yeah, but, but you see, you, Pat said that Dublin won last year because they were fit and they were well organised. Oh, does, does that mean they can't be fit it and was, well organised this year? It was more than that, but I think that what he was saying is that, and it's right, they had, they had a day of days. You know, it was just an unforgettable day. I mean, it was an errant hand pass that made it all possible. I mean, Kerry were cruising and, uh, you know, Kerry are, are a better team than Dublin, but you know, Dublin made their own luck once, once they turned that ball over and scored the goal. I mean, it was an unforgettable day and the problem is to recreate that because, you know, there is no doubt that there was a great exhilaration and a great desire and all of that. And it's different now this year. It's just different. So and, uh, you know, teams like Kerry can perform at a level like that year in, year out yeah. because they're really just set up to perform like that. It's going to be more difficult for the Dubs, but they'll be there or thereabouts because in Leinster... Kildare still lack the X factor unless they can, right, which is always possible. They could always persuade Colum Cooper to make the 280 mile round trip and give him an address in Staplestown or somewhere. You know that type of thing. They need that X factor. And as things stand at the moment, so Dublin they, are going to be just Dublin are going to be there and there about. Yes. They're not going to win the All Ireland. If that's the case, then is it going to be Kerry or Cork? Because they seem to be the next choices. I think well, it's most Kerry, likely, you know, I mean, because Martin, Martin alluded to the fact that Kerry are the purest. Yes, they are, and they can be. They're the most skillful team in the country. But unfortunately, for the last couple of years, and last year's Ireland, they're falling into the trap of being negative, playing too deep, the short passing. It costs solar them running. Ireland, solar running. If Kerry go back to basics, what are Kerry good at? Kerry are good at two things. One, they're brilliant foot passers. They're very comfortable on the ball. That's number one. Number two, Kerry have the best set of forwards in the country and they must place faith in them. They must get the ball in. They must have done here at the edge of the square. You take the best forward in Ireland, Colin Cooper. He, he got on the ball last year 11 times in the All-Ireland yeah. final. Five, six of those were in the middle of the field. So if we're going to be positive yeah. and play more, be more positive, be more proactive and take the game to the opposition rather than retreating yeah. back and rather than playing this slow, ponderous game, believe in tradition 
traditional Kerry values, and Kerry can win. But could in you Ireland. imagine, Pat, how devastating Kerry would be, for example, if the like of Tony McEntee had them for six months? Because they're all great kickers. Well. Tony said this to me himself. You know, he says these are such great kickers. Well, yeah. they're such great catchers of the ball. And yet, for example, you see Declan O'Sullivan spends a lot of his time in the half back line, solar on but him with the his modern, head down. But sure, you know, is this I mean, not a point that the modern game of football forces them into a different style? No, I mean, it you just can't be playing the kind of football that no, well, they were playing with Pat's. But I was playing back no, in the seventies. But you harness the football that you've got for your individuals, and Kerry have great individuals that kick in the ball. I mean. Uh, just to give you a simple analogy, what Cross do with blanket defences is they don't run the legs off teams. They kick the legs off teams because they're very accurate kickers. Yes. They kick the ball 50 metres. Kerry have loads of boys that can do that. Plus, they've got the best high fetch and, and playmaking and full forward in the country over the last 10 years. And they've now stuck them at wing half forward. I think tactically it's wrong and that Jack O'Connor wants to look at that again. But they're still the most likely team to come through. Your neighbours, Cork, won the All-Ireland two years ago, kind of took a bit of a year off last year in the Championship, if you want to put it sort of that way. Will they bounce back? They will, and, they, and, and again, they'll be there at the business end. I genuinely believe probably they'll beat Kerry in, in the Munster semi-final and win the Munster. Uh, the big pro Cork tick a load of boxes. Like They're a very consistent team. Physically, the most imposing team in Ireland, the most athletic team in Ireland. So, the, what I see a problem with Cork is that they're a bit, they're inhibited and they don't play to their strengths at all. They play a ponderous short passing game at times that. I and they with don't that. move the ball quickly enough. You take the ply of yeah. playing Aidan Walsh at full forward. They're playing him at full forward, but they're leaving him there for five minutes and they're not playing the ball. And I think if, if Cork be a bit more positive, like Kerry, Cork can win the no, other because the they're a good side. But the only thing at the end of the day, that. Joe, at the end of the day, if Kerry play Cork in, a, in Crow Park, whether it's a quarter final, a semi final, a final, Kerry will always beat Cork in Crow Park because they have the quality forwards that Cork can't defend against. Let's just, and we're running a bit short in time now, so let's just very briefly expand it beyond that. If it's not going to be up, Dublin, Kerry or Cork, who else might sneak in there, Joe? Well, I think Toronto don't have the sparkle of old. Yep. You know, the, and teams are on, teams are onto them now. You know, Dublin yep. were onto them last yep. year. Donegal were onto them. Kildare are onto them now. You know, and they just don't have the sparkle They're of old. Progress. Donegal are very, very hard to beat. Of course, it is absolutely dependent on Murphy's fitness. Yep. He is the key to it all. As we saw, you know, this year in the league in the matches that he didn't play. Against Cork, he played one game against Cork. They destroyed Cork and he scored 1-4, one, 1-5. One, Michael, play. Kildare will be very close. Kildare will be very close. They will come up, they will be very close. They'll be there to business in They're probably team number four in the country. They'll come up short because they don't have the flair forwards that can win a game. Donegal will be there <laughs> or thereabout. But Donegal <laughs> need to have a plan B this year. They need to be more positive. They need to be more in attacking mode. And I watched them during the league and I didn't see that. No, so I think, I think second season syndrome, the they know how Donegal are set up now. Team.